Welcome to Europa, one of Jupiter's icy moons. These dark lines that crisscross Europa are cracks in the ice called Linnea. They are created when the ice cracks and water from below rushes over the surface carrying dissolved minerals with it. When the water refreezes, it leaves these minerals behind embedded in the ice. In Linnea, players compete to explore Europa's ocean, collect its resources, and ship them back to Earth before the surface can refreeze. Linnea is a pick up and deliver Euro game for one to five players. It's played on this board. The bottom half of the board depicts a cross section of the ocean. At the ocean floor, there are four random mineral deposit tiles. Each mineral deposit tile has a row of resources, which dissolve further into the ocean each round. Each tile also has a pool of specific resource, which can be extracted for further bonuses. There are five resource types in Linnea. Sulfur, salt, hydrocarbons, iron, and silica. Resource cubes are collected by these six submersible vehicle tokens, which are shared by all players. Players can take control of them to pilot them around the ocean and pick up mineral cubes and excavate mineral deposits. Picking up cubes earns money. Moving a submersible takes electricity, which is generated at the beginning of every round. These sunlight icons at the top of the board depict energy that shines onto your solar panels and earns you electricity. But watch out, because the sunlight is blocked by this Jupiter token, which advances further across the board each round. Players can also dock with a submersible by moving it all the way to the surface of the ocean where their vessel is located. Pay $1 per cube that you'd like out of the submersible's hold and move it to your own cargo area. The primary way to earn points is to load resources into these rocket cards that are distributed randomly across the board at the beginning of the game. To load a resource into a rocket, you're going to move your surface vessel to the location of the rocket and place one of your workers on the launch pad. This allows you to load one or more resources onto the card at your current location. Loading two cubes in one turn earns you three victory points, as indicated on the board. If you complete a rocket by filling all five spots, you have launched that rocket. Return its resources to the pool and keep the card as a tiebreaker. You are now entitled to one card from the technology deck. Choose any card in the deck and add it to your tableau to provide an additional action or benefit for the rest of the game. Another way to earn points is to take control of a submersible and use it to excavate the mineral deposits. This extracts these cubes directly from the mineral deposit tile. Doing this advances you in the excavation track, which earns you points and additional bonuses, as indicated. Each track is a race, as only one player can be in the final spot. As Jupiter advances across the board, it blocks the sunlight from the surface vessels below it. However, each vessel comes equipped with a diesel engine, which allows you to spend a hydrocarbon cube to generate electricity without sunlight. Place this cube in the atmosphere track at the vessel's current location. This will block out some of the sunlight in future rounds. This leads to a feedback loop where more players will now be forced to burn hydrocarbon for electricity. Surface vessels can move horizontally across the surface, but only where the water is at the same level. So this vessel could move these three spaces. This vessel could move from here all the way over to here, but could not move to this space. In order to move to where you'd like, you'll need to manipulate the level of water, which you do by opening and closing one of these four lock tokens distributed across the ocean. To open or close a token, place one of your workers in the action space below to toggle the state of the lock. Remove the lock token, Water tiles will then flow out, potentially off the board, as long as there's nothing holding them in place. This one also. Submersibles that flow off the board will return to their original location, as marked on the board. Note that when you have ownership over a lock, if another player chooses to cross it, they must pay you $1. It's worth noting that sometimes the way to get where you want is by closing a lock. So if the blue player wants to move all the way to the left side of the board, they can't. They can only go this far right now. But 
if they close this lock, the water tiles will flow in from the left side of the board to fill in the empty spaces. So now they can move all the way over to here. However, this player can only move in these two spaces. For a more advanced game, there are also these optional colony cards available. These will fill in empty rocket spaces with colony buildings, which provide additional actions for any player at that location. There are three basic action spaces on the board at the beginning of the game. This one allows you to spend a worker to earn $2. This one allows you to spend a worker to purchase additional workers. And this one allows you to spend a worker to take control of the first player marker. However, these basic action spaces get phased out during the game. This says that during the end of the second round, the colony card with the lowest number will be moved up to replace that space in Europa City. It can now be used by any player regardless of their location. Now we'll want to backfill the empty space with a new colony card off the colony deck. The microwave power dish, for example, lets you spend money to purchase electricity. Okay, now let's walk through a sample turn. It's the first round, and it's the blue player's turn, and they have three workers and six electricity to spend. They're going to want to get some of these cubes and hopefully score some points along the way. The first thing they're going to do is take one of their workers and take control of the E submersible by placing their worker in the action space. They can now move this submersible any number of spaces. They're going to choose to move one space down. Now that they're at the space, they're going to excavate this mineral deposit. This places one of their workers from the supply on the excavation track and earns them one victory point. They're going to continue moving the submersible two, three, four, five, six spaces total. And they're going to collect these two cubes along the way. All right, they've loaded three, these three cubes onto the submersible, which gets them $3 from the bank. Because the submersible ended in a place where the ship can move to, they may choose to dock with the submersible to purchase any of these cubes for $1 each. They're going to choose the sulfur and the iron cube and pay $2 to the bank. This ends the blue player's turn. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit to round three and see another sample turn. The blue player really wants to finish the, launching this rocket over here, and they have all the resources they need to do it. However, they're stuck over here and have no way to get to where the rocket is. So the first thing they're gonna do is take one of their workers and use it to open up the lock. This removes the lock token. Any water tiles will flow off the board. Remember, the submersible that flowed off the board goes back to its original starting location. Basically, any water tile that isn't held in by a lock will flow off the board. So that was the first player's first turn. However, the action space with the lock has an arrow underneath it, uh, which means the player is allowed to immediately take another turn. So now they're going to move to where the rocket is. Now they'll place another of their workers on the launch pad. They'll take the two irons and one silica and place them on the rocket. Placing the three cubes earns them six victory points, as indicated on the spot. OK, now this rocket is complete, so we'll take all the cubes off, place them back in the supply. There's now an empty spot on the board, so we'll take one of the building cards and place it in that spot. At the end of the fourth round, we'll take the colony card that has been exposed that has the lowest number, and we'll place it over the hire a worker spot. This colony card will now be available to all players regardless of their location. Hopefully that gave you a sense of the unique mechanics and thematic tension-filled gameplay that Linnea has to offer. 
Several optional expansions are also in the works, including an algae pack that adds a new resource cube type that's generated by sunlight. Thanks for your consideration.